I know. You shocked to see us here? We're shocked to see you here. Figured you'd be on IR. Yo! <laughs> What's going on? Why? Nico's going to IR for weeks at least with a hamstring injury. It's Brian. It's Brennan. It's too much fantasy football. It's too much bullshit. All the injuries. We're, we're here on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. Thanks for joining us, folks. You can just say too much sad boys in here because that's what I feel right now. Oh, hey, you want another breaking news, too? You want to add on more to it? It's 1040 it. on Wednesday. Uh, Joe Mixon is not at practice for the Texans. So, um, I, he, I'm like, I was like, oh, he's for sure going to come back this week. Like... The Texans are going to be rolling out there with, like, you know, they thought they had Stephon Diggs, Nico, and Tank, and now it's Bumawale and Stephon and then whoever else. I mean, the Texans, they better just be lucky that they are in one of the shittiest divisions because uh, all these injuries, they should be a team that, you know, barely makes it to the playoffs. But, nope, they're going to run away with this division because uh, nobody gives a shit the rest of the, the AFC South. Come on, fellas. Get it together. You know what? I'm just here to rain on more parades here. I got no, I got more news, too. Uh, Brian Dable said Malik is feeling better, but he's still in concussion protocol. So that's, that's not good either. That's not – because he's the rookie. He's the only bright light in that building yeah. at this point. Not a coach, not a not a front office person, not a player outside of Malik Neighbors gives any hope for that organization. That's, that's going to be a tricky situation. Uh, luckily, the Giants game we will cover tomorrow. Uh, Hopefully we get a little bit more information because he's he's got a nice – he's playing the Bengals. Who doesn't love that? Yeah, good matchup. Oh, God. All right, let's get into this this Thursday night game, the fun of it. Um, sure Wind and doubt, game. right? <laughs> 49ers at the Seahawks, 49-point over-under. San Francisco is favored by three-and-a-half points in this game. Where are we starting? We can start, you know, we'll start with San Francisco side. I feel like their side's always uh, more fun. So, I mean, Brock Purdy, are you, that's, he's kind of a questionable, like he seems more of a stream star. Are you starting him though? Uh, I am starting him this week. I do have him in my top 12. Okay. It's Thursday game. Uh, we're right now looking at the Chiefs, the Rams, the Dolphins, and the Vikings out. So if you had Sam Darnold or Patrick Mahomes, Probably not Matt Stafford, but you know you're looking for a pivot option between that and all the injuries. I do think. I mean, I'd rather play Brock Purdy than C.J. Stroud this week. That's for sure. Just all the crap coming down to him, you know. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I don't hate the start necessarily. It just you know Thursdays always scare me. Jordan Mason's in your lineup. He's locked in. He's not leaving. He's basically taking on like the the B version of the CMC role. Just don't throw him a pass to the outside, and he won't fumble it. You know. Um, <laughs> Brandon Ayuk had the had a you know the game that we all been waiting for where you took him you know I think you what did he have like twelve or how many receptions did he have he had like something ridiculous yeah it was absolutely wild he had uh, twelve targets eight catches one hundred and forty seven yards what, last week I was going to say twelve catches but it was twelve targets yeah but he went off uh, Debo's in your lineup George Kittle's in your lineup um, Jawan Jennings are you fading him now is he just going back to the bench what are you doing with him uh, he's a fade if you have room to hold him I don't mind it but. At this point, there's so many pieces there. Mason, IU, Kittle. Uh, Kittle didn't practice Tuesday. Uh, we are recording Wednesday. Still waiting for that practice report to come in here. Um, so he might be up in the air. But, uh, yeah, Jennings just, despite the chemistry he has with Brock Purdy, he'd be a great number two, number three on other teams, it seems like. But here it's yeah. just too crowded. So it'll be a fun free agency next year. Um, Seattle side, um, Geno Smith, are you starting him? Like, are you... I think I'm going to follow the the mantra here on this one. I'm going to avoid Gino just because it's the Thursday game. I don't want to force him into my lineup. Um, All right. I don't mind any Dalton. Uh, hey Brian, baby. I got a question for you: Gino or Anthony Richardson? <sighs> is 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 a Rich playing this week against the Titans? Yeah, he's playing. He's practicing. He's practicing Ooh. right now. So, ooh, that's actually really that's a challenge right there. Yuck. I guess Gino. All right. Just wanted to check to see where your head's at. Uh, it's Tennessee, man. It's Tennessee for Anthony Richardson. All right. What about you? Where are you at? I'll probably say Anthony Richardson. I have more hopes than that. God. 
Uh, I guess uh, Joe Flacco, though. You playing him auto start over Gino if he plays? Yeah, I would definitely start Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's still slinging it. Um, Kenneth Walker, I'm definitely starting. Um, DK, JSN, Tyler Lockett. That's the only, the only probably only questionable. Are you going to start him this week or no? I think I'd rather play Juwan Jennings over Tyler. That's probably a little much. There's going to be more of a pie to, to eat out of on the Seattle side. And if they are going to be dogs, like it's looking like from, from Vegas' eye point, we might see something there. But I don't want to play Tyler Lockett. Okay. All right. Uh, who do you got winning? Um, Give me Seattle. Give me Seattle with the upset here. You know, I think Seattle covers the spread. I just don't know if they win. I think th- I think three and a half is kind of crazy. I think uh, I think minus I think two and a half San Francisco is more feasible. But yeah, I'm leaning towards Seattle. I don't know if they'll win though, but I think they'll cover the spread. I agree with that one. I like that. Yeah. Back to London we go. Jags taking on the Bears on a 45 point over under. The Bears are favored by two points at this. <laughs> I mean, it's gone down from two and a half to two. What's happening in, in Jacksonville? You know. They're playing a home game across the pond. Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. I guess you know, beating, beating the Colts gives everybody life. But uh, we can start with the uh, Chicago side. Uh, are you starting Caleb this week? We have a lot of more fringe, like questionable starts here. I think with some buys, but I think Caleb, he's he's cooking a little bit, so I think he might be worth worth monitoring to start. I don't mind it at this point. Jacksonville is allowing the the most points to quarterbacks, so. Yeah, in the wide receiver position, throw it up on Jacksonville, man. I, I don't know exactly who's going to be catching it because it's we can't quite get anything concrete on the Bears side. But uh, yeah, give me Caleb Williams. I like him as a pretty decent streamer this week. Okay, uh, Swift. He found some life, I guess, from almost being benched to now being a good starter. I guess I have no freaking clue. Weeks one to three, and then weeks four to five, uh, there was like a, a almost twenty point per game difference in those. You know, mm-hmm. first three to the second three. His usage usage completely the same. His running back share exactly the same. His target share it's gone up four percent. How the hell? I mean, like it's just night and day from his performances here. So you've got to keep playing him. But I, I think he's bad enough overall that Roshan still remains a, a viable flex option here. Yeah, I got you. Um, I mean, DJ Moore is definitely starting your lineup, but then it gets kind of questionable after that. It goes to um, you know, are you starting Keenan? No, Keenan's off my team at this point, but uh, Roma Dunze, he he is where I think the excitement lies. Where are you on, on Odunze? Stash and wait. Stash and wait is probably where I'm at. Gotcha. Wouldn't play him in this game? No, I'd want to wait. Uh, we got Christian Kirk on the other side. Do you play Christian Kirk over Odunze? Yes. Ah. <sighs> I agree with that. I still think I might be tempted to play him this week just because of how many points the Jags get up. But at the same time, we see most of the games that are played over in London, they hit the under. So, yeah, you know, take that for what you will. On the Jacksonville side, like, is there controversy in the running back game? Like, are you starting? Are you, which one are you, are you going to start ETN, right? I'm not starting Tank. I think I still think ETN would bleed back. I just think it just happened to be Tank had a great game because Cole Stevens is trash. Yeah, I think so. I think no matter what, Tank Bigsby's not going to be a bona fide start until we see um, until we see ETN get hurt. He's still getting all the targets, and that's ultimately what's going to boost up uh, Tank Bigsby to, to make him. I mean, is he flexible here? Maybe, but like I said, it's going to hit the under most likely. So I try to avoid it. Yeah, and then Brian Thomas Jr. is in your lineup. He doesn't lose your lineup the rest of the year. He is a solid start week in week out, and I called it for a while now. <laughs> Absolutely, I saw him in your DFS lineup this week. I had to match you. Oh yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy. I, he he is stupid cheap. He is one of those guys you can just keep starting. He will still get you points in DFS. He will not leave my lineup. So no, I love him. I think he's just one of the uh, the very high points that we've seen come out of this draft so far. I have the Jags winning this, by the way. Yeah, I, I like that. Give me the Jags. It says they're away, but this is a home game for them. Uh, Evan Ingram yep. is supposed to play this game. It looks like he is going to come out for uh, put him week back six in your return. Then. Yeah, so put what? him back in your lineup then. I put him back in your lineup then. Ugh. I mean, it's a tight end, folks, so manage expectations. But, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it is what it is. 
All right, time for a game between the fastest quarterbacks we have here in the NFL. It's the Commanders, the 4-1 and one Commanders at the 3-2 and two Ravens. 51.5 point over under. Baltimore's favored by 6.5. <laughs> wow, these quarterbacks, you're starting them no matter what. Quarterbacks, what, 1-2 and two on the season? This like this game is supposed to be like one of the most like fun games we could watch. I mean, because Jaden Daniels is obviously going to be rookie of the year, but like, like legitimately MVP talks. Like, and you you have to mention him. Like, this so this is kind of crazy. Um, and Lamar on the other side is having a really good year too. So like, he's this is a you know this is one for the ages or for the season I would say for this week. Um, everyone should be watching this game for sure. Uh, we can start on the Ravens side, though. Um, Lamar is not leading your lineup. Derrick Henry is not leaving your lineup. Anytime touchdown, he has hit. It's crazy. He'll probably hit again this week. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Zay Flowers, I, I'm starting to lean towards starting him again. I think, you know, this should be a shootout game, so I think Zay should definitely get some of the pie. Um, I'm out on Bateman unless you're really, really hurting. Like, I think he might – you're hoping for the end zone, which is where he's found him a lot. Um, <laughs> this is where it gets sad. Isaiah likely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, I don't know how you're really feeling at tight end. I'm not, the, I'm not really big on it. I don't know about you. If I'm starting one out of this tight end room, it's, it's still going to be Mark Andrews. And that's only because I missed out on getting Tucker craft off waivers, or I didn't pick up the other gym that happened to fall to me. I don't know many other streaming options that, does he have the Who gets more points this week? To? Does uh, Mark Andrews or Collar, their other tight end, pull up their tight end two versus their tight end three? I don't know. Who gets more points? I'm going to go Mark Andrews. Like, Mark Andrews went down on the, what was it, the two yard line, and then Collar came out there and, like, cleaned up for him. So, had that not happened, we'd be having a completely different conversation about yeah. this game. But it still it fell the way it did. So, I can't make excuses for the guy anymore. It's week five. Earn a spot on my roster, buddy. Yeah. I'll play um, Ertz. I'll play Ertz on the other side over uh, over Andrews. I'll say that. Yeah. So on the commander side, uh, Jane Daniels hasn't left your lineup. You shouldn't leave your lineup. I know you probably took someone like you know earlier, like a CJ Stroud or something like that. You should definitely be looking to move Stroud now. Definitely. Um, Brian Brian Robinson Jr. is not leaving your lineup. The dude. You all the jokes of you know I accidentally took Brian Robinson instead of Bijan Robinson. Well, the jokes on everybody else because Brian Robinson's out playing. Bijan, which is crazy. Um, Terry's now locked and loaded in your lineup now from week to week now? Yeah, I'm Question playing mark? him as a, I guess, a high-end wide receiver three with upside. So, yeah, he's he's in the – I'd play him over Zay Flowers. Okay. All right. Um, Zach Ertz, you said you'd start him. Are you going to start him over, over likely? Yeah, I'd start him over likely. I don't like starting likely. I don't know – I mean, if you're in a deep enough league, but I don't know that I found a position that I actually enjoy starting likely. All right. Who do you got this week? Uh, give me the Ravens. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I think the Ravens, I know Jaden Daniels, we're all kind of like waiting for that game for him to kind of like fall a little bit. I think he might not have like the greatest teams. The Ravens still have a good defense on their side. I think this will be a good matchup for him. So I agree. You can throw in the Ravens too. So, you know, let's, let's let them see it. Toss it up a little bit more, man. Cut yeah. it loose. All righty. Cardinals at the Packers, our next game. It's a 47.5 point over under. It's in Green Bay. They're favored by five. Green Bay's three and two. Cardinals are two and three. Give me some freaking points in this game. Like, the Packers and the Rams let us down. The Cardinals cannot be consistent here. <laughs> like, that division's there for the taking for them. And they're just trying not to. I don't know. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, we'll start with the Packers side. Uh, Jordan Love, I'm probably starting him. He's starting to figure it out a little bit, finding the end zone with some of the wide receivers. Uh, Josh Jacobs, you're definitely starting him. Um, I'm not really too worried about the guy behind him. Uh, I think it's Wilson, right? It's, who's yeah, Emmanuel him? Wilson. Emmanuel Wilson. Yeah, I'm not too, too worried yet. Um, Jaden Reed doesn't leave your lineup. The dude, no matter what, just makes big plays, and he's going to be a big help to your team. Romeo Dobbs. I think I'm starting him over Dontavian Wicks. I think he's going to come out a lot more fired up from that suspension. 
I see Dobbs as more of a floor play and Wicks as the ceiling play out of the two. Romeo Dobbs is consistently out there on the f- field. He catches the ball better than Wicks does. Um, he gets a yeah, lot of a yards. <laughs> he absorbs quite a bit. Uh, but T- Dontavian Wicks, we see him in the end zone. We see him for those deep plays. And he gets an unreal target share. I mean, part of that is because he drops half of them, so they have to keep throwing it to him for you know for us to move the ball a little bit. But uh, you kind of saw the upset from Wicks last week. You know, all of this hype coming into it. He's not a consistent player, so him going back to back weeks after his two touchdown game. Uh, I mean, it was just it was there for the disappointment. But I'm okay going back to the back to the well. Yeah, I think for me. Um... I, I'm starting Dobbs over Wicks. I think Dobbs, I think he's a little pissed off, so I think he's going to have a little bit of motivation to gamble for both, but I think Dobbs is just the better pick at the two at the moment. I mean, Kraft, Mac, and Cheese. Is he in your lock load in your lineups now? Uh, hell yeah. He is one of the few tight ends that I can put in there with confidence at this point. Okay. Yeah. I think he's, uh, I think he's in that territory. I'm starting over Mark Andrews this week, so... That's uh, that's where I'm at with uh, the tight end this year. It's really really mm-hmm. fun. Um, Cardinal side, Kyler's in your lineup. James Connor's yep. in your lineup. The dude's on a roll. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, you really have no choice at this point. Um, but their second round pick from last year, I think it's Wilson, Michael Wilson. Mm-hmm. Is he creeping in your lineup this week? I don't mind it. Uh, his catch okay. percentage is significantly higher than where uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s is. Granted, Marvin Harrison's got a lot of deep passes, but you know he's five for six last week, seventy-eight yards. Uh, we, you know, last three weeks he's had nine targets, seven targets, six targets. I like it in a game that I see as a, a pretty good, you know, as close to a shootout, shootout. as we can get yeah. in this modern era. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, Trey McBride's lock and loaded in your lineup. He's one of the top five tight ends who's not really been disappointing. So, uh, I think the Cardinals covered the spread, but the Packers win. Uh, I like that. it's five points. Uh, yeah, I th- I think they just barely cover, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the Packers in this one. Yeah. All right, folks. I know it's October on the calendar, but it's finally time for May. I think it's here. <laughs> I think it's here. Uh, Jacoby Brissett looks like he's uh, riding the pine, and we got to, got ourselves a little bit of uh, Drake May action, maybe, possibly, hopefully. Uh, yeah, this I mean, it's, is it's, a. It's, it's gonna be me. <laughs> it's gonna be a thirty-eight point over under. That sucks. Like, what, what's going on there? <laughs> oh man. Um, we'll start. We'll start with the Texan side because there's just there's a little bit more umph there. Are you starting Stroud? Like, are, is he like? Are you like who gets more points this week? Geno Smith or CJ Stroud? Geno Smith might. I think like. That, okay. It's a hard one for me. It really is. Okay. Yeah, I think Stroud, I think you, you have some options for Stroud. You can probably stream elsewhere. I know it's not the funnest thing to hear, but it's just losing Nico. Is, that's a, a huge, huge weapon for them. Um, Joe Mixon's still not practicing today. I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, he's a little older, obviously. Um, I, I don't want to start either running backs of Akers or Abunga Wale. Uh, so I don't know where you feel about those two, but I'm, I'm not on both running backs. Nope. I've had enough leagues where I've dabbled in the Cam Akers game and I'm yep. done. I, I don't care until Joe Mixon comes back. And honestly, this whole offense is cooling on me. I'm going to take my shot on Tank Dell. I've seen him hit the waiver wires in a couple leagues. Uh, so I, I am trying to make sure that I still own a piece of that. I'm excited for it, but ugh. ugh. Stephon Diggs is a good start. He's going to go into the the lead role now. And I think he'll get a bunch of targets and receptions. I just don't know what they'll amount to with yards wise, but he, for PPR purposes, he's definitely not fringe wide receiver one this week. And what the, he hasn't caught a touchdown since week one. He got two in week one. Hasn't caught one since then. Like I need yeah, to get a rush. Yeah, touchdown against playing Jacksonville. The defense. But like last week playing Buffalo, anytime touchdown, Savon Diggs, let's hammer that. Back. Like, uh, better defense for the Colts. God, yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely firing up uh, Tank Dell for sure. I think Tank Dell is for sure the one to be like the wild card here. You're really hoping for um, Dalton Schultz. I mean, like I think he gets a little bit of a bump. I wouldn't if you're really hurting and like they're just kind of streaming somebody. It's Dalton Schultz is in a bad stream. 
Um, yeah, I don't hate it. And then Patriot side. I know they said that Antonio Gibson is the starter, which is weird because Antonio Gibson also has fumbling problems. I'm firing up Ramondre. I still think yeah. he's the better back. He's more explosive. It's not even close. Now it's going to be interesting with Drake May starting. Um, out of the wide receivers, I just think Demario Douglas is probably going to be the uh, the one out of it. But I do, I do, I am stashing Polk in a lot of leagues. Just kind of like it's a wait and see kind of a thing. And I think that's where I'm at with the rest of this team. Hundred percent. If you really need to start, and these are your choices to look at, Demario Douglas. I mean, he might do decent as far as just absorbing targets. You know, he could give you a six catch for fifty five yards kind of a game. Uh, but I wouldn't expect a whole lot. Yeah, I love the Polk call. Absolutely love that. If you are a five and zero team, a four and one team, he's a great grab right now because we don't may still a question mark. We're not going to know exactly what he is for at least a few weeks. Watch him develop. Uh, Polk separation has been. Um, like top of the the list as far as rookie wide receivers going into this year. So yeah, absolutely love him as a, a great stash. Yeah. I still think the Texans win. I still think like it's a rookie star. I know he's at home, but I just think like, we're just, I, I'm not sure about Drake May and the whole Patriots office. Texans still have a good defense. So like they will come after him at all costs. So yeah, give me the Texans in this one. All right, everybody. It's it's rattling season, right? Derek Carr's he's on the bench for a few weeks. He's a little hurt. Buccaneers three and two take on the two and three Saints. Forty one and a half point over under. Tampa Bay is favored by three and a half. Spencer Rattler, the rookie, looks like he may be getting the start. Why isn't Jameis? The, finally, we can get a Jameis week, and he, of course, he left New Orleans, so we don't get that anymore. But uh, the rookie's taking over there. Shahid Shahid looks like the number one for the offense. I think a guy named Olave still plays for him. But how do we look at the Saints offense going into this game? I, I actually think it's going to be a reverse role. I think the the deep shots that Derek Carr takes like eight times a game is definitely not going to be there with Radler. I think Olave is what you saw from last week. I think is a fluke. So I think Olave is now going to be getting a healthy amount of targets. And I think Rashid Shahid actually takes the, the fall back here. Um, I still think Kamara is obviously a safe start no matter what. The Duke's just going to get the ball. They, they definitely want to get him the ball at all costs. Um, Juwan Johnson, like I, I'm just not sure with a rookie starting. I, I kind of want to you know fade elsewhere. If this was Derek Carr playing, I wouldn't say it's a terrible idea. He still was doing something with Derek Carr, but we just don't know with Rattler. I think Rattler's going to play it safe and just go for the short intermediate throws. I don't think he'll do the long ball. I think it's not his specialty anyway, so... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not saying Rashid Shahid this week though. I'm I'm actually gonna pull away. I'm I'm right there with you, Juwan Johnson. Yeah, he's five for five, thirty-one. Uh, Foster Moreau stole the touchdown, so I did like him going into this week if Carr was playing. But without that, no. Uh, Spencer Rattler, not really a scrambler. We've seen him move a little bit in college, but um, more close to I feel like a Patrick Mahomes style of moving than like a you know, the Lamars of, of them kind of rushing, but I'm really hoping he's just dumping it off to Kamara. That's what could yeah. give us this great relationship. Make Kamara and Olave still good because you're just peppering them with targets. And we still may, you know, see a little life from this offense. Going over to yeah. Tampa Bay though, Baker, a lower scoring game. Him. They may not need him as much. Is he still a confident start? Yeah, I'm still starting him. Cool. They're in New Orleans. So like it, they, I think he's going to be putting up some points there. Now the running backs where it gets fun. Bucky and Rashad White. I know Rashad White had more points last week, but if you take away the one breakaway run of like 50 yards, it was Bucky, even with the fumble. So I am probably still leaning towards Bucky. Um, they still seem to have confidence. Todd Bowles ever said after the game, if he fumbled, he's like, you still want to give the guy the best. You still want to give him touches. He's still one of your best players. So you still feel confident starting Bucky. Um, and then where are you at with those running backs, by the way? I don't like it. If I'm starting one, Bucky's the one I'm more intrigued in. Like, of course, we're seeing more life coming out of him, more, you know, electric plays. So if I have to pick between the two, it's it's him. But I'm not a huge fan of either one of them in this game. I don't think someone's going to fall in the end zone, though. Godwin and Mike Evans are must start, so there's not even a question of that. Who do you have one in this game? Hey, Godwin might eat. We know Mike Evans doesn't give a shit about playing in this game. All he wants to oh, do is no, fight Marshawn fighting. Lattimore. He's just fighting Marshawn yeah. Lattimore. He's, <laughs> he's going to get his touchdown so he can like stare at him and do his little taunting thing. But outside of that, he doesn't care about catching balls in this one. This is a Chris yeah. Godwin game right here. This is a Chris Godwin game for sure. It's hilarious. I do oh, like Otten as a streamer. Just throwing that out no, there. Uh, target percentage 
17, 18, 25% the last three weeks. We've seen uh, McMillan and Palmer out, so maybe that plays into it. But give me Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah I think Tampa Bay wins. I think it's going to be a tough start for the Saints' uh, young quarterback. <laughs> the team that looks so hot at their 2-0 start with their great offense. Remember when we were saying that shit? Oh, yeah, I gone. know. <laughs> All right, last game we're covering today. 14 games on the slate. This is number seven. We've got the Browns at one and four, taking on the two and two Eagles. 42 and a half point over under. Phillies favored by nine points. Deshaun Watson is still starting, as we have heard. So uh, start up your Phillies defense, folks. Just pick them off of the waiver wire. Yeah, seriously. Deshaun Watson is so bad. I so <laughs> Dude, I-, I don't know what's killing. Like, I don't know if you saw the other uh, podcast, a part of my take where they were trying to name bad quarterbacks to see who they rather start. And they came to the, the line was Desmond Ritter or Deshaun Watson. <laughs> God. That's how bad it is. Uh, we'll start with the Eagles side, though, because it's fine. Uh, Jalen Hurts is back in. Uh, Saquon. A.J. Brown's healthy. Devonta Smith is healthy. Um, Dallas Goddard's getting a bump down. I don't, I, sorry, folks. I know you've been riding hot with him. He's, he's now going back to, Fourth in the pecking order of this because AJ Brown and Devonta Smith are better, and Saquon's better. So I'll play Zach Ertz over Dallas Goddard in this game. I will too. Um, and then the Eagles defense, I'm firing up. You know, I know how bad they are. They just cut Devin White. That's how bad it is over there. But I still think they're not a bad start because that's how bad the Browns are. And that's really all we have to say about this game. <clears throat> oh, hold on, we got to start somebody on the Browns. Are you starting Cooper? I'm starting him purely because of his target share, but like his uncatchable rate or uncatchable ball rate is putrid. Um, he's dropped a few. This offense has no inspiration at all. If anything, I'm trying to trade for him. You know, how bad can he be that I can trade for him before he gets traded himself? <laughs> yeah, I think Marty, I think if they definitely lose this game, they're going to start selling a lot of pieces here that they feel like are just expendable. And I think Amari Cooper's one of them. Um, you know, it'll be very interesting to see where he ends up if they do ultimately put him as a free agent. If uh, Devontae strikes out in the Jets or Saints, I think Amari Cooper could definitely go over there. I don't know if they go to the Chiefs. I think people are trying to avoid the Chiefs. Have you heard the, the, the report that the Chiefs have offered the most for Devontae Adams? <laughs> they're the only team to offer up a second-round pick for him, and the Raiders don't want to do it. Dude, like, I, I know, like, everyone likes the crap on, like, Nick Wright for his takes, but, like, he had a good take. He's like, at some point, you that's what you asked for, and they're the only team giving it to you. Like, you might as well take it. You get rid of the dump of the salary, because I don't know if you saw that how much he's owed the back two years. It's $35 million each season after this season. So, like, if they're willing to eat it, too, like, I mean, at some point, you got to sit there and look at the pros and cons of things. Like, you're not going anywhere. The Chiefs are still going to be there. Mahomes is, isn't, you know, falling off a cliff anytime soon. Like, I know you're going to help him win, and I'll look bad, but, like, yeah, yikes. Yeah, what are you going to do? Cut him this offseason so he gets to go there because he gets to choose it, and you still don't get a draft yeah. pick from your, your rival? I know we went off task, but, like, are you starting Jerome Ford, David Njoku, any of those guys? Jerry Judy? I'm not like Jerome Ford. I'm okay. done. I know he's been yeah. a floor play, like barely or RB two, but I'm done. We've seen uh Pierce strong now come in. We've seen Donta Foreman split the carries with them. Nick Chubb is just like, I mean, he may not be coming. He if might come back. I mean, if they're not playing for anything, maybe he doesn't come back as much just to, you know, prove himself yeah. for his next contract. But yeah, yeah. no Jerry Njoku got hurt again. Sit him. Yeah. I think the Eagles cover the spread out right too in this game. Uh, I, I think the Browns win. I think Deshaun Watson is not as bad as Sirianni is as a coach, so I think the Browns win this. No. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm probably oh, gonna put a cool a, take. I might put a couple bucks on the Browns just for that lottery ticket win, but I Eagles, they're coming off a bye. You, yeah, you they're better healthy. win. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> All righty. It's, it's time. We got to get out of here, folks. We can't thank you enough for hanging out with us, going through the first half of the start sits. Come back tomorrow. We've got the other half for you. We will do the final seven games. Uh, it's the uh, the Fantasy Football Advice Network, folks. You come into it. You're hanging out. You're getting your start sit questions, all the content you need. It's where you find me. It's where you find Brennan. Uh, Brennan, where else can they find you if they're if they're looking you for you? You can find me on X, FFA, and BMOL, you know. Crying about the Colts sucking so much and the Dodgers choking in the world in the playoffs. Fun stuff. 
Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. is that baseball? We don't do baseball talk. Get that out of here. It's October. It's the greatest sports month in all in all of America. All right, so I'm allowed to here. It's, for, right, it's October. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll let it pass. <laughs> yeah, and you can find me in the Facebook group on Fantasy Football Advice Network asking about your dynasty and redraft questions. You find me all over Twitter mainly at too much underscore Brian. Of course, we've got this show five days a week here, so come hang out with us. And if you need more, you want to start sit questions, you want to get more involved with the community, but not the toxic park of other social media platforms, come check ours out. Where is it at? Oh, it's right here. We are here. We are here. FantasySportsAdvice.com offering the best fantasy sports social media platform. Why join endless Discord communities or the trolls of Reddit? <laughs> Fantasy Sports Advice is a community designed to help you win with 24-7 support. Go to FantasySportsAdvice.com and become a pro member for unlimited access. Again, go to fantasy.